So Alice, one more question on neuroscience, just because like we're trying to uncover a lot of truths around it. You've done extensive study on cognitive neuroscience and you've worked in the past with all kind of uh, AI research and, and um, training these machine learning algorithms. So could you break down some actionable steps for us in terms of unlocking creativity? Because we spoke about how um, depression, getting too much hyper-focused, all of this can stand in the flow of uh, getting our creative thoughts out. So how would you say one can unlock creativity, especially as a founder and builder at this uh, current stage of tech? Yeah. Um, and to me, it's interesting. So the product that we've ended up building this AI power dot partner in part helps me do my work as a founder, right? Like a lot of it is focused on getting us into this creative flow state. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I mean, for actionable tips, I think that being intentional about what you're consuming, how much time you're spending consuming is good on both ends. So you don't want to be so hyper-focused on building that you don't know that chat GPT was released, right? Like you want to be aware of the world. You want to be communicating with other people. These new ideas are really exciting um, in all kinds of spaces, not just in the machine learning space. Um, so I think that, you know, making sure you're consuming information, but being intentional about that consumption. The next piece mm -hmm. is, you know, creating this space to do that work. So um, I think as a founder, especially, and I know that's a lot of the audience for this podcast, you know, you need to block some time. It's so easy to say next week, oh, this thing came up, something happened with our back end or front end, like I can't <laughs> right now. Um, but, you know, ultimately it's a mixture of execution and strategy and the strategy yeah. piece, the creative piece is not going to happen if you don't make the space for it. So I think, you know, making the space, however that works for people to do that, like blocking calendar, things like that. Um, and then on, in terms of boosting creativity. So once you have some materials you've gathered, you've got a space that makes sense. Um, playing with connecting those ideas all the time is another thing that I think is important. So like, even as you're reading, start to write down, like, what does this mean for me? What, how is this connected to something else I know? Starting mm. even at very beginning consumption stages of connecting those and that piece, those pieces of information, that'll boost creativity. And then humans are incredibly helpful for, for like boosting each other's creativity. Um, so even this conversation, you and I are talking about, uh, you know, the same subjects, but you have a bunch of information in your mind um, and in your knowledge that's important mm. and a perspective and from mine. And so uh, people, when they talk with other humans and work with them, they can boost their creativity that way. So they start to form these connections and they start to see things from another perspective. That's really impossible if you're on your own. If you're just, you know, on a desert island and you've got your whiteboard, like, and the books, like you will have creative thoughts. Um, you might go, you know, insane otherwise being alone. But um, I think I encourage people to like go for a walk, get some space away from the thing that they're working on to let all that stuff cohere and connect for them. But then talk to friends, talk to other founders, talk mm -hmm. to your community, talk to your family, whoever it is. Um, and you'll be amazed at how much that groundwork of, you know, consuming, connecting your own thoughts together and then sharing that and getting feedback back and forth will push your ideas too.